All right, if you've ever wanted to see the Northern Lights, that beautiful, amazing display of dancing green and blue lights, you may get your increased chance in this next year. Thanks to increased sunspots, the Northern Lights are going to be more visible and maybe even to us here in Michigan. So joining me now is Sean Dahl. He's a service coordinator with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA as we like to call it. Sean, it's good to see you. Nice to meet you. Why don't you go ahead and first of all, explain the phenomenon behind the Aurora Borealis. Yeah, sure. Uh, the Aurora is a result of interactions between activity that's um, erupted from the sun, transited through space, and ultimately came at and around our planet. And that dynamic is really a result of our protective magnetic barrier, which we call the magnetosphere, and particles coming from the sun in the form of electrons. So when we have started to see increased sightings, especially here in Michigan, and we know even in Minnesota, in, in Wisconsin, what has the, been the change in the atmosphere that we've been able to, they've been more visible to us? That's really a result of some of these solar storms, especially the ones we call coronal mass ejections, or CME for short, which is explosions from the sun that send not only bulks, billions of tons of solar material in the form of plasma, but more importantly, a strong localized magnetic field carried out into space along with it. And when that magnetic field meets Earth magnetic field, if they're favorable, meaning they connect, so imagine playing with magnets and you take two magnets and you try to put them together at the same polarity they repel, well, sometimes that happens. In this case, as of late, uh, some of these fields have been more favorable than the opposite of Earth's, and they've connected. And that's when we start to get an enhancement in auroral activity. So explain to us then the, the solar prediction panel. So it's NASA and NOAA, and they get together. And what have they seen now that we'll see that there's increased activity in the next 18 months? What's the significance of that? And, and I think what I read also is this is, will be the best time to view in the, in the last 20 years. Yeah, that's, that's a possibility. The solar cycle prediction panel that you're referring to that includes members from NASA and other scientists around, uh, it's an international panel, and they released their forecast prediction for the solar cycle. And their original forecast was for something very similar to last cycle, which was not as active as the previous cycle. And these cycles are every 11 years, so that's kind of the time frame and duration we're talking about. So far, this solar cycle activity has been above the predicted expectations. What does that mean? We don't yet know. The sun is still a mystery. It could be peaking early. It's just an 11 year average, or it could be stronger or stabilize. Uh, so we're yet to be seen, but right now we're above that level of expected activity based on that prediction. And that's why we're seeing more solar activity in the form of coronal mass ejections, more sunspots that are usually the source of these activities, not always, but they're usually the source and thus more auroral uh, possibilities. Is there, what can we possibly learn from this when we see increased activity? What makes scientists so excited about this? I mean, I know just from the lay person, just the view of it, it's something that has been capturing our imagination for thousands of years, but what kind of scientific data can we bring out of this? Yeah, there's always studies going on in science, especially regarding to the impacts. The aurora is really a manifestation, a beautiful thing as you reference uh, for us to behold. But behind the scenes, there's a lot going on that can impact some of our technologies. Normally, even when we see the aurora strong overhead from a place like uh, Michigan, doesn't necessarily mean that there's uh, things that are being impacted in a bad way. Things are certainly being noticed. There's potential for some minor impacts. But as these levels of activity increase with the aurora, usually the higher the geomagnetic response is what we refer to when it comes to these types of storms. It's the geomagnetic storms. And they have a, our NOAA space weather scale is a one through five scale. Hmm. And we get in the five top end, the extreme activity, uh, maybe on the high end of the severe activity, that's when we could be seeing some impacts of some of our technologies. And that's what scientists are really studying is what does that mean for our way of life? All right, and I think everyone at home are also wondering, Sean, it's like, how can I see them? Where, you know, what is the best way to be able to, to try to catch it or, or, to, or to see it? Uh, visit our webpage, swipsy.noaa.gov. There's as much as possible because it's public domain. You know, taxpayers mm -hmm. are paying for this information and science going on. So we put as much out there as possible. And be looking in the forecast for what the predictions are for this one through five scale on geomagnetic storms. And Kind of follow that guideline. We're never perfect on this science. We're trying to forecast a storm coming from the sun 93 million miles away, right? It's hard <laughs> enough to do it 
uh, to predict the path of a severe storm here on our planet, just going 50 to 100 miles. So it's a very difficult thing to do, which is another thing science is really investigating. But watch for that, see what the predictions are. When we start to talk about G2 levels, especially G3 levels, the likelihood of seeing that over Michigan in a dark sky area with no moon or a, a, a weak moon waning or waxing would be a really great time in the late evening to around midnight hours when it's possible to see them. All right, Sean Dahl from NOAA, thanks for explaining the science for us and getting us all caught up on it. It is something that um, I've always wanted to see as well. And so when we saw the headlines, it's, it's pretty exciting that the possibility is there. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to be of help with you and Christy and uh, all your viewers. Uh, thanks for your time. All right. Take care out there in Boulder, Colorado. All right. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.